G'day guys, James here. Today in this video, you're gonna see how to direct stick an engineered oak floor over the top of a concrete slab. Now what you're also gonna see in the video is how to waterproof the slab first so no moisture comes through. We're gonna talk about some of the tools, some of the tips, and things like how to cut around kitchens and island benches that we've had to do, and how to tackle things like doorways as well, and expansion joints. Lots of things in this video. Stay tuned guys, hope you enjoy. I'll come back at the end and I'll give you a bit of a wrap up and my final thoughts. And as part of the prep, you wanna clean down the floor. So I've just got a big floor scraper just to take any dags of plaster, glue, or anything that might be on the concrete slab and then once you've done that you give it a big sweep and a vacuum and then we're ready to put our membrane down all right now this part of it is uh, a membrane so there's two parts of this it's a 50 50 so one to one ratio the reason i'm putting this down is because i don't want any moisture coming up underneath the floorboards um, once this goes down if the flooring or the timber was to get wet underneath, it attracts mold, and then if mold gets trapped under the floor, it just creates a sort of unhealthy home. So a lot of other floating floors, they'll actually, if it's floating, they'll have a, a membrane that goes down, or like a, almost like a sheet of plastic, and then the board goes over the top of that. But because it's a direct stick, like I said, I don't want any moisture coming up through the slab. And technically speaking, it shouldn't, because we've got a moisture barrier underneath the concrete, but and, it, and this slab's also been down for probably about a year and a half, so it's had a lot of time to actually cure. So um, yeah, do your homework around that, just make sure your slab is completely cured. But for us, uh, just that extra layer of precaution is putting this down. Like I said, I'm gonna mix 50-50 in there. And you just need a mixing paddle on your drill, slow speed. Another little thing when doing this is to have some of these handy wipes. Got some of these Bostic ones because you will get this stuff all over your hands. And these just have something in it that just gets all that glue off. And these will also come in handy for when you're actually laying the floor because there's going to be glue underneath the boards. And from time to time, you may get a little bit on your pre-finished board. So you can use these just to wipe that off just before it dries. Got that mixed up. And I'm going to drop some of that in my paint roller. Normal paint brush just for doing around the edges. Just do any areas where you don't want the roller to, to bump up to. Applying this, you want to put it on nice and thick. You don't want any pinholes in it. And sometimes it may even require two coats. When choosing your membrane and glue, you want to speak to like an adhesives expert, like either a company that specializes in tiling and flooring glue, and that's all they do. Uh, we use the company called Bayset, which are based here in Queensland, and all they do is tile glue and flooring adhesives, and they specialize in this sort of stuff. And you want to make sure that the glue, like I said, is compatible with the membrane, because if you use two different products, it may actually break down the membrane, or the glue may not stick, and your floor will just fail. We're just laying a few boards out to start working out the set out. Um, we're going to see what works down the hallway, whether we need to cut a board or um, how we're going to space that out exactly. We've got a couple of different spots up this hallway here. So we've got this section of the hallway. Then when we go behind us, it actually steps out into a bathroom. And then we've got some robes and some other doorways to contend with. But we've worked out the spacing should work if we just take 30 mil off this first board. Or if we rip 30 mil off, we're going to flick a line all the way through here. So for now, we'll get these lines marked and we've got something to work to. Okay, and so now where this line is through here that we flicked right up our hallway, we've measured back towards this big sliding door at the back and worked out how that goes for boards. And at this stage, that works out pretty good for our measurements as well. All right, now while those boards are getting ripped, we're going to get our glue set up. I've got a glue gun here. You can use a battery operated one or even just a handheld one. We're using the sausages, which is a bit different to the trowel long method that you see on some videos. The reason we're doing this I'll show you as we go along, but I think it's just a cleaner method and it's probably a bit easier for the average person who's doing a bit of DIY to actually use a corking gun and put it on the boards if it's applied correctly. So that's what you'll see us putting the boards down with. Alright, so as we go, packing these boards so that they're on the line and then because it's your first row and you've got something to pack against, also put something heavy. Or we're just putting another pack of boards over the top of these just to keep it weighted down so that when the next ones interlock, it's all nice and flat on the slab. So we'll keep going, good progress. All right, so once you've got your first line laid out and glued in and sort of weighted down a bit, then start spreading some of the boards around. It's good to take different packs and spread them because you may get some color variation between the different uh, grains. And you've also got different size boards. So just make stacks of those around so that when you start laying, you can sort of get a bit of an inconsistent pattern throughout the floor. 
So you'll see here now I'm gonna throw a little shorty into the mix just to break up this pattern. The first one was all full lengths. Like I said, the good thing about doing this squiggle method with the gun is you don't have it everywhere, so I'm not walking over a trout area of glue. It just seems a lot cleaner. Plus, you can get that bead really thick. At the moment, that's going on probably about, I'd say about seven mil. Normally, when you put a notch trowel down, use a four or five mil notch trowel, and even then it might slump a little bit. And if you're not using it as you go, it tends to get a little bit tacky, whereas this is coming straight out, so it's gonna adhere straight on. All your engineered oaks are gonna have different ways they go together, but this one is a click together board. I'll show you a close up of that in a second, but basically it's got a tongue and a groove, and they're tongue and groove on each end too, which makes it a little bit tricky. So you've gotta line up tongue and the groove to get that in. Once that's in, you fold that down and it actually like just clicks into place. But what it also has, like I said, is a tongue and groove at the end. So what I have to do with these ones is actually get a block and a mallet and tap that in and get them to click together in the ends as well. And then what that does is just allows the ends to click together. You see there, there, now it just finishes it off. And now that we're starting to get into our openings, now we've intentionally left our door jams, architraves and everything off these linens and all our doorways that go into the bedrooms. The reason being, with this click method where they drop in and fold down, it makes it hard to actually get a board underneath a door jam if they're actually in place already. You have to undercut the door jam and then try and slide it in and click it in place. Quite tricky with this style of boards where they interlock. You can see why we're doing that now. We'll start cutting into where these wardrobes go and start cutting into some of our areas towards the bedroom where the doors go. Now we're gluing it up and then we're gonna drop it in. You need to have a little bit of cardboard or a scrap bit of timber just as you're gluing this down to stop any of that glue that oozes out of the nozzle from getting onto the floor. And what you'll also see here is once that overlaps in, you've got a little bit of a gap here. So yeah, what you do is just get a solid block of timber and just make sure it's nice and wide, not too narrow, because otherwise it'll ding the tongue and groove on the end. And then you just tap that and it'll come up and clip in. Let me show you a close up here of what this tongue and groove looks like when it goes in. So you're basically just laying it there, folding it forward until it hits, roll it in and then you're just left with this last little five mil bit that you need to tap in. So you'll see this close up now. Then we tap that in with a block. It just closes over beautifully. And you'll see there to mark out the doorways. For any frame openings, it's just a matter of holding the board in place with your square, putting a line either side so you know where your cutout is. Just giving it enough room for that tongue to slide in, whether it be five mil, 10 mil, or whatever the thickness of the tongue is on your board. Boards need to be a minimum 10 mil off a wall, just to allow for expansion and contraction of the boards. See there, just do a dry run before putting glue on it, make sure it's going to fit. Once you know it fits, then you can glue it up and pop it in. I'm now going to show you how to cut around a doorway or around a wall. What you need to do is have a 10mm spacing at each end. You need to have 10 mil, I didn't know if I touched on this before, all the way around all your walls. That way, if the boards ever do swell, it's not gonna um, push against the frame tight and pop and bow. It's then a matter of just measuring back off your finished board, back to the wall. Here I've got 60 millimeters, but I know I wanna have a 10 mil gap, so I'm gonna make that 70 millimeters. So all I do is just transfer these marks now onto here. Where that line is, I go 70 mil this end, 70 mil that end, and then it's just a matter of squaring up that line there, and that's the section of the board that we'll be cutting out. All right, so we're now at our door jam stage. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we cut this in. We're pretty lucky, as I mentioned before, because we're putting this direct stick floor down before any of our door jams are gone in. It's just simply a matter of working out where this board's gonna come through to, which is halfway under the bottom of your door and then cutting this to suit. And then, like I said, we're lucky enough that this can still click and drop into place. And then what will happen once we do our fix out, we've got our door jam made up here behind us, but that will basically just come straight down and then that can sit on top of that board neatly. And then we can also put our architraves around that to finish it off. And then the skirting, the skirting that we've got is 18 millimeters thick and our architrave is 18 millimeters thick. So then that will go over the boards and cover up any of the expansion gaps that we had. So we had the 10 mil expansion gap all the way around. You really need to check what thickness skirting and architraves you're gonna be using because here in Queensland, a lot of the profiles are on the 11 millimeters. So when you're leaving a 10 mil expansion gap, you don't have a lot left if that gap 
creeps a little bit bigger. But what would normally happen if these jams were in place? So if it's a pre-existing home or you've come in to do the floor and the carpenters have already fitted everything out, then what you'd have to do, if this door jam was already in down to the floor, then you'd have to mark the thickness of what your board is onto the jam. And then you're gonna need a, a, like a specialty tool, probably a multi-tool to then actually undercut that out. A multi-tool is something like this, a flat blade, and you can actually go through and then just cut the bottom of that out. But then what also becomes tricky, and I mentioned this before, is because this is tongue and groove, and it's designed to fold and click down, you won't be able to do that at the door jam. You'll have to actually cut a little bit of this tongue out and a little bit of that groove out on that side so that the board, once this is cut out and sitting up higher, can then slide in under the jam and click in. But because you've weakened the tongue and groove, what you'll have to do is run some PVA glue along what's left of the tongue and some PVA glue along what's left of the groove so that when that does slide into place, just like a normal tongue and groove board, that locks down, combined with your glue underneath and combined with the PVA glue, should lock it in nice and solid. And now the position where you wanna finish this board, you can see here we've got a line mark. Now this line, halfway under our door. So you wanna identify which side of the jam the door's gonna be going on. And for us, the door's sitting here, flush with the internal wall and opening into the bedroom. So that means our door's 30 millimeters thick. So we're coming back basically 15 millimeters from the edge of our gyp rock, which is gonna land that board halfway under the door. So that way you've got carpet finishing halfway under the door and then you've got our floorboards finishing halfway under the door. What I also like to do is this edge, because they're on this board, there is about four or five millimetres of uh, veneer. We just get a little tool or a bit of sandpaper and we just chamfer the edge so that that just has a nice pencil round on it. And that way you don't have any splintering edges. And the guys doing the carpet can run their smooth edge along here and then just turn the carpet down into it and just have a nice joint. This is 15 millimetres high, carpet's usually 15 or 20, so there should be a nice smooth transition. All right, so here's another area. This is budding into two wet areas or two tiled surfaces. Where the boards bud in this end here, we're leaving a five millimetre gap against the tile trim. I know we go 10 millimetres everywhere else, but generally when the boards run lengthways, they won't expand much that way. It's where the timber's got grain that it usually expands in width. That usually gives it most of the problem. But in saying that, you don't want a big gap right near your tiles there. So we go five mil and then we'll just cork that with a little bit of color. The good thing is too, our tiles here and our tile trim is actually 15 millimeters and the boards are 15 millimeters thick. So that's a really smooth transition between the two there. On this side, the board's not cut in yet. We're just about to cut this one and roll it into position. So that again, that it's got that nice five mil gap. Fold that down, clip that in place, tongue and groove and everything's all interlocked nicely. And then that just leaves that nice five mil gap that we can just cork there with probably a color similar to this board. All right, here's a little tip for opening up the top of these sausages. Sometimes when you cut them, they can fold out and it causes all the glue to ooze out around the base of the nozzle, making it quite messy. So Wags has got a little tip here just with this metal ring. And if you hit your nips, you just got to open that up. That just makes it so much easier because you've got all this part of the actual sausage or the, the paper that then can slide inside there and that oozes up inside the actual nozzle itself. And it's just way less messy. So you can see here, we're just opening a few up now and dropping in the bucket just to try and speed things along because there's two of us. One of us can actually be gluing the boards or gluing the slab, maybe two boards out, and then popping the boards on top. You can see here from the glue, this is our little scrap board that we've been putting the nozzle down on just so that we don't get it on the floor. How flexible this glue is, this is amazing. So that's dried hard. That's like a little rubber, little dollop of rubber. So this was the other spot I was saying it's gonna be a little bit tricky is cutting in around the kitchen. Now the kitchen guys have left this up 17 mil. Our boards are 15. So what we're gonna do is get the boards to slide under probably about 30 millimeters the whole way around this kick. It's probably gonna involve cutting off some of the tongues and grooves in a couple of spots just to be able to slide under or slip under that kick. But again, it might be one of those times where if you know the kitchen island bench is gonna go in, maybe you can lay the floor beforehand and they can install the kitchen on top of it. Again, there's pros and cons to that as well too. If you ever wanna change the floor down the track, you've got a solid floor stuck underneath that actual 
uh, island bench. Not that you'd want to really you know, change it in five or ten years' time, but in saying that, also if there's ever any water damage, if there's a leak in the sink and water gets down into the floorboards, if you've got a solid timber floor under that can expand and then it could just make a mess of the rest of the floor as well. So here with this one, I'm going to measure tight to the kicker and then I'm going to allow for that to slide under say 30 millimetres under there, which if the weight of this ever came down, that would be good enough to hold that kicker. All right, now this is where it's going to get tricky. This is where I was talking about because the boards interlock and they click in like this, to get around some of these areas in the kitchen, we're going to actually need to take that bottom section off there and this bottom section off through here. So basically it ends up becoming more, rather than a clip in, it becomes more of a tongue and groove so they can still slide into each other. Um, and in some areas we may have to actually rip that tongue off altogether just so that they can drop into place as well. And so here's one of these sections, we're just going to take that tongue off the bottom one. That's already glued down and in place, unfortunately, so we just take that off where it sits. What we've had to do up this end is take that tongue and groove off completely, so that that will allow this to drop into position. And then what we'll do is we'll just slide that back and then slide it into position this way. So a bit of a, a tap back here and a tap in there with plenty of glue under it. And that should uh, do the trick. And also on this corresponding tongue, so we've done the, the tongue on this board, now we need to take the, the tongue off the back of that as well so I can slip in. By taking the tongue and the grooves off, leaving a little bit of tongue on this side just for interlock. Now we're going to use a bit of PVA glue in here and we'll tape all this up so that it's held in place while the glue dries. And then because it doesn't have the interlocking clicks holding it into position, I just like to get a little bit of tape. Now we repeat for all the rest going this way. Slide this piece in from that end. That will allow that to go under and just give a good amount of coverage underneath that end of the, the island bench. Like I said, there's a mill or so gap there, which is good that they've left that up. So that way, once the stone goes on top of this, if any weight comes down, it can now sit down on top of the floor. So plenty of glue just in that tongue. You can just check your 10 mil as you go. Make sure you're keeping your expansion joint off the wall. Okay, so we're now at the stage where we're cutting in. We've cut in around the kitchen. That was pretty time consuming getting all the floorboards in around there. We'll probably give that a bit of a corking, and a bit of a seal all the way around it. But the next couple of things that we're gonna do now is I wanna get some protection. I'll show you what I'm using. It's basically just like a, a padded plastic and we're gonna roll that over the floors, tape it down just inside of the skirtings. It's got that impact protection, but also scratch protection as well. So you'll see me do that now. I'll put that up the hallway just to make a bit of a temporary run that we can walk over. Okay, so this is the expansion joint that I was talking about. We've left a 10 mil a gap right through here and on the opposite side of the island bench in the same location. So we've just used a 10 mil packer to space that out. And what we're gonna do is come through here with a, a corking color that's very similar to this oak and fill that and just put a nice silicon joint through there. The way the plywood works is the plywood is laminated with different veneers and you might have five or six different layers. What can happen is if that gets wet and expands, it just grows. And you can imagine if you've got, you know, say 20 boards through here and each one swells a millimeter, you know, add that up, there's 20 millimeters that the boards could actually actually expand and when you get to areas where you've got you know, maybe six to eight meters that's definitely by about eight meters you want to put an expansion joint in and that's what we've done here so that's just going to give peace of mind that if it does swell this is an area where it can grow without the boards popping and buckling So what you want to do when you put your floor protection down is just keep it uh, enough out from the wall so that you can get your skirtings on. So we're going to have an 18 mil skirting. So I'm going to bring this back about 50 mil from the edge to leave enough for half the tape to slip, stick down to the, the floor, but then also leave enough room so that the skirting board 
can come down and not have to sit on the tape, it goes directly down onto the timber. All right, so now that part of the floor's in and part of it's covered up, we can start putting these door jams in and then we can arc and skirt around them and get it all finished off. All right, so basically we've got that half of the house finished off now with the floorboards. And what we're doing is just clearing out this area where we had a bit of other stuff left over, some architraves and some corners and a few bits and pieces. Clean this whole floor down and then we'll re-waterproof the rest of it. All right, so that was the last of the skirting in here as far as the fix out goes. So what the boys are doing now is just grabbing the last of that flooring and we're gonna bring it out here and start laying the rest of this in the lounge room. And then that's pretty much the last of our fit out to go. So we put this down and then we'll put our last little bit of skirting over the top on both sides. And then that's it. All right, so this is the last board that's got to go on. But what, before we do that, there's a, a gap in the rebate in the slab here. What happened when we poured this slab, we just made it a little bit oversized so that we could sit the door, the aluminium track of the door down in there so that we could try and get this nice and flush. But there's a section that we need to fill. So we're gonna mix up some floor leveler, pour that in and let that dry overnight. And then once that's dry, then we can put our last board on. And mix this with a bit of water. And just make it nice and runny. Like I said, most of it is self-leveling. So as you pour it in, it'll find its own level. So there you go, it came up pretty bloody amazing. So very happy with that. Now I mentioned I'd talk about some of the pros and cons. Now the pros, pros when you're using the sausage gun and you've got the tube is that you don't get a lot of glue or a lot of mess anywhere. You can actually contain it just to the board or just to the area that you're working in. Now the con to that is if you're doing a lot of it, like we've got 160 odd square meters here, so quite a lot of board, you are changing tubes quite often. They say they recommend to go through about one tube per square meter, but to be honest, I went way over that just because I was very heavy handed. I personally don't like the idea of any boards popping or hearing any hollowness. So I used a lot of squiggle, basically tight glue lines throughout the whole build, just so that when you're walking around, you don't get that echo underneath. It's really dense, it's really stuck down to the concrete. So yeah, a lot of money spent on glue. I think from memory, we spent in the first batch, it was, I think, $1,800 on the glue. That was about $8.50 per tube, and then another 80 tubes to finish off. But yeah, it added up to a lot per, for this whole thing. If you're a DIY person and you're definitely doing like one bedroom or two bedrooms, definitely the way to go, worth the investment. Even if you don't have this tool and you wanna buy one, just get it off you know, your local Facebook marketplace or something like that. Do the job and then sell it again if you're never gonna use it. The other thing I mentioned was a good glue. This is specifically designed for flooring and you can see there that when that comes out and it's dry, it's just like a rubber dollop. So underneath the floor, that just gives it a little bit of extra bounce. And then you've got all the tools that go with it. You know, when you're cleaning the floor, Get a good floor scraper to get rid of any gunk that might be down there. You know, you've got your brush and rollers for painting on the membranes. You've got things like your hand saws, drop saws, and then any little basic power tools that you may need to sort of get that job done. I'll put a link, like I said, below to everything that I've used in the comments so you can have a look and see that. But yeah, hopefully guys, that gives you a bit of an idea of what you need. And like I said, the, the biggest thing here when you're putting a floor down over a concrete slab is you don't want that moisture to come through because if any moisture does get through, and it gets trapped at the bottom of the board, that's an area where you're just gonna get mold and moisture build up. And if you get a layer of mold underneath your floor, that's not a very healthy home to have. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed the tips and enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Like or subscribe if you're new and uh, hit that notification button up there so you can stay up to date with all our videos and all our tips. All right, and don't forget to follow us on social media as well. <laughs> okay, cheers guys. Hope this helps and I'll catch you next time.